Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to take you through how you can knit a panel on your circular knitting machine. Now as you can see I've got the Centro 48 peg knitting machine here but this method will work on absolutely any circular knitting machine. First of all, I'm going to show you how to knit a panel using your entire machine and then I will take you guys through how you can create a smaller panel even if you have a larger machine like this one. The smaller panels are perfect if you want to be able to make smaller items but you only have a large knitting machine. For instance, you may want to make a baby beanie but you only have the 48 peg machine and we all know that the 48 peg machine is way too big to make a baby beanie using the tubular setting. What's great about the panels is you can make a panel in absolutely any size all you then have to do is seam it up the side and you have a tube in any size. That's what's great about the panel knitting setting and I feel like it's really underrated. A lot of people are probably I think intimidated by the panel knitting option and they tend not to use it. So anyway I showed you briefly before what this little panel looked like and if you do have a knitting machine already I'm sure you are familiar with the tubular setting which basically creates a tube that looks something like this and you can then turn it inside out, fold it up, you've got a beanie or whatever else you make with your tubes. But what the panel knitting setting does is allows you to knit a single layered panel just like this one. The panel option is great if you can get your head around it. It does take a little bit of practice but once you get used to the technique you will absolutely be able to do it at no problems at all. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on and let's get into the tutorial. So to get started, what you're going to need is, of course, some yarn and that's pretty much it for now. You will then need some kind of needle to help you cast off at the end. But for now, we're just going to need our yarn and our knitting machine. Now, first of all, I just want to mention the settings. So if you flip your machine over, you will notice that there is a little switch here with a T and a P. Now T is for tubular and P is for panel. So what we want to do is switch this little switch here up to the P option. Now I'm not going to do that yet because what I want to do is just show you guys the difference. So I've left it on the tubular knitting option and you will notice that you are able to easily wind your machine around and around and around and every time you get back to your white peg your row counter will counter row if your machine has a row counter but if we switch it over to the P the panel knitting option you will notice that you won't be able to crank your machine in a circular motion. Once you get back here to your white peg, your machine is going to stop. And you will notice that it goes two pegs past your white peg, which is technically the last peg of the round, but I'll explain why it does that a little bit later on. But you will notice that your machine will stop and you'll no longer be able to crank it. Whatever you do, please do not force your machine past this point. It's not meant to go past this point. It's in the panel knitting setting, which means it's only going to let you go to a certain point and you won't be able to continue around. You then have to go back the other way. So do not force your machine past the point where it stops or you will break it. So we see we get back there to the white peg and it stops again. We cannot go any further. But yeah, I just want to reiterate, please do not force your machine past this point because your machine will break. Okay, so now that I have showed you guys the difference between the tubular knitting option and the panel knitting option, I am now going to show you guys how we can knit a panel using our Centro knitting machine. So, what I'm going to do is take my yarn now and all we're going to do is cast on as we normally would if we were knitting in the tubular option. So once you've found the end of your yarn, as I said, all we're going to do is cast on exactly as we would if we were using the tubular method. Um, the cast on process is exactly the same. So we're just going in under that first peg, 
and we're then going around behind the next peg under behind under behind under behind you guys know the drill i'm assuming you know how to cast on if not you can check out my cast on video but we're just going to cast on now all the way around until we get back to the beginning just like we normally would if we were using the tubular setting Okay, so I'm now back to my white peg so I can stop casting on and I'm now going to place my yarn into our yarn holder and into the tension gauge. I just use the medium setting for tension um, because I usually just kind of regulate my tension with my hand rather than relying purely on the little tension gauge. Um, but you guys just do whatever works for you and your yarn. So now that we have cast on, you will notice that your machine won't wind any further. It'll only go to two pegs past your white peg, like I mentioned before. And the reason for this is because when you're knitting in the panel setting, you are always going to lose a few stitches at the beginning of the row and at the end of the row. You'll see why once I start cranking, but that's just how it is. It will skip a couple of stitches at the beginning of the row and a couple of stitches at the end of the row. So that's why it allows you to go two stitches past because it's going to skip these stitches anyway. Okay, so we're going to crank until we get to that point where it's stopped and it won't let you crank any more. The most important thing we want to make sure is that this bit of yarn here has gone in under this little, let's just call it a nook. I don't know what else to call it, but we want to make sure that our yarn is in under that little nook there to the right of our white peg. It is very, very important that your yarn is in under that little nook there because otherwise the ends of your work are going to unravel and be really, really untidy. You will drop stitches and it won't be nice and neat once you're finished. So the most important thing when using your knitting machine in the panel setting is to keep an eye on your ends. That is the most important thing. So now that we've reached the end of this row and we can't go any further, we now need to crank backwards. So back the other way. And when you start a new row, you just want to put a bit of tension on your yarn there just to make sure it is nice and tight. And just cranking really slowly for at least the first row because if you've cast on before you'll know that your cast on round is quite loose so we just want to go really really slow to make sure that we're not dropping any stitches so again we are cranking backwards I know you can't see my hand I just wanted to make sure it was nice and close up so you could see what the yarn was doing but we are cranking backwards until we get to the point here where we can no longer crank any further. So that's where our machine stops at our white peg. Now, exactly the same thing. We want to make sure, so this is the end of our yarn where we just started. So we know that this is the first stitch of the row. And I mentioned before that it was going to skip a couple of stitches at the end of the row and at the beginning of the row. And this is what I'm talking about. So now that we are back here, the most important thing is to make sure that the yarn has gone in under this little nook here to the right of your loose end of yarn where we begin. Okay, so I can see that the yarn has gone in under that little nook, which is perfect. That's what we want. So now we can crank back the other way. Again, just putting a little bit of tension on this bit of yarn at the beginning of the row because we don't want those ends to drop off. And again, just going really, really slowly for the first couple of rows just to make sure that we don't drop any stitches. And cranking until we get all the way to the end of our round. And I can see that the yarn has gone in under that little nook to the right of my white peg. So I know that my end is secure and it's not going to drop any stitches. Again, putting a little bit of tension on that um, yarn just to make sure that the end is nice and secure and cranking back the other way.
And this really is all there is to it, guys. I know the panel knitting seems really, really um, intimidating at the start, but it's actually really, really easy once you get used to it. So as I said, the most important thing is keeping an eye on your ends and making sure you don't lose them. They are the most important thing. We don't want to lose our ends. So again, I'm back here at the white peg. I can't crank any further putting a little bit of tension on that yarn just to make sure that the ends don't pop off and again ensuring the yarn has gone in under that little nook which it has so I know I am now ready to go back the other way. Cranking all the way until our machine stops again which is right there. Again, just checking on our ends. You may end up with a little loop here at the beginning, like I have. You can see I've got a little loop of yarn there. That is just because it's the beginning of the round. You will be able to fix it up once we cast off. And usually, if you were making something, I would recommend starting with a waist yarn and ending with a waist yarn. I didn't use it today because this is just for demonstration purposes. I just wanted to show you guys the technique of knitting um, in the panel setting. But usually, for this exact reason, I would recommend using a waist yarn because it just leaves your ends a lot more neat and tidy. And you will avoid things like this because that loop would have been in the waist yarn and we're then going to get rid of that waist yarn so you will no longer be left with this loop. But again, I'm just showing you guys the technique on how to knit in the panel setting. Um, I'm not making anything in particular so that's why I didn't go ahead with using the waist yarn for today's demonstration purposes. Okay, so I've cranked all the way to the end again. We are now ready to go back the other way making sure that yarn had gone in under that nook which it did. And putting tension on that yarn just to make sure the ends don't fall off and we're ready to keep going all the way back around and again we're back at the white peg the yarn has gone in under that little nook which I am happy about and we're going back the other way and this literally is all there is to it, guys. It's so easy once you get the hang of it. I know it does seem very intimidating at the beginning. But once you get your head around the ends and guarding the ends with your life, um, you will absolutely have the hang of it in no time. That is the overall technique on how to panel knit on the knitting machine. I am now going to go ahead and take this off of my machine and I'm going to show you guys how you can knit a smaller panel on your knitting machine. So even though this is a 48 peg knitting machine, if I wanted to make something smaller, so I only wanted to use say 20 of the pegs or 10 of the pegs, you most definitely can do that as well. So that's what I'm going to show you guys how to do next. So I'll be right back once I have removed this from my machine. All right guys, so I have removed that from my machine. And as I said, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a smaller panel if you don't wanna use all 48 pegs on your machine. Again, we are just casting on as normal, but instead of going all the way around our machine, we're only gonna cast on, I'm gonna do say 20 pegs, just for example purposes, so I can show you guys how to not use the entire machine. So I'm starting at peg number one, and I'm just going to cast on until I get to peg number 20. So now that I have cast on to peg number 20, which is this peg here, I am just going to insert my yarn into the yarn guide and into the tension gauge. And I just want to crank just one stitch past peg 20 because I want to make sure that that yarn goes in under that little nook there to the left of peg 20. This is going to ensure that our end is nice and secure and stays nice and tidy. Once you've done that, we're just going to put a little bit of tension on that yarn there and start cranking back the other way. Now you'll notice when you knit a panel but don't use your entire machine, you will not lose a stitch at the end of your work. You will still lose 
two stitches at the beginning of your work, but at the end, you will not lose a stitch. And that is because you can continue cranking until the last stitch has been completed. So therefore, none of your stitches will drop off, provided you ensure that that yarn has gone in under that little nook there at the end, which I just showed you guys. So keep that in mind when you are trying to figure out your stitch counts. If you are knitting a panel but not using the entire machine, you will not lose a stitch at the end, but you will still lose two stitches at the beginning of your row. Okay, so we're now going to continue cranking back the other way really slowly for the first few rows at least. And we are now back at the beginning. Okay, so we know, like I said before, we're going to lose two stitches at the beginning of the row. So once I start cranking back that way, we will lose stitch one and stitch two. It's going to then pick up stitch three. And the reason for this is because I physically cannot crank past that stitch, which means I cannot crank far enough for the machine to complete stitches one and stitches two. So a way around this is to simply knit a panel in the tubular setting. So using this exact same method, but just using the tubular setting and therefore you can crank your machine past this point and you will be able to finish off those stitches so you won't drop anything. But for the purpose of today's video, I just wanted to show you what it was like knitting in the panel setting to show you guys what the difference is. So anyway, we know we're going to lose stitch one and stitch two, which are these two stitches here. So all I'm going to do now is put a little bit of tension on that yarn and start cranking back the other way. Again, just going really slowly for the first few rounds at least. And you want to crank. So this is peg 20 here, but we're going to keep cranking very slowly until we see that yarn flick in under that peg that with that little nook that is to the left of peg 20 because that tells us that that end is now secure. So once that has flicked in under there, we can then start cranking back the other way. And again, here we are at the beginning. You will notice now that you can clearly see that peg number three is our first stitch. Peg number one and peg number two no longer have any stitches on them because those stitches were dropped at the beginning like I mentioned to you guys. So it's now really clear that peg three is our first stitch. So again, we are putting a little bit of tension on the yarn and cranking back the other way until we get to peg 20. And again, we're just gonna crank a little bit past that until that yarn flicks in under that little nook there, which it has just now. So I know I can now start cranking back the other way. And that honestly is all there is to it, guys. As I mentioned before, I would usually recommend using a waist yarn at the beginning and the end of your work just to tidy the ends up a little bit. But again, as I said, I didn't do that for this example. I really just wanted to show you guys the technique of panel knitting. But what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and crank out quite a few rows. And then I will show you what the panel looks like and how to cast off once you've finished. When she first found out how pretty she was in the life of the town Never really wanted to be the center of it But she could dance all night if she wanted it Every single step and every single move was being watched Okay, so I have now completed quite a few rows and now I'm going to show you guys how to cast off. So the cast off method for panel knitting is pretty much exactly the same as the cast off for circular knitting. Um, the only difference is obviously it is a panel and not a circle so or a tube I should say so the process is exactly the same so we're just going to remove our yarn from our machine and we're gonna cut the end but making sure to leave a decent enough tail that you've got enough to go in and pick up all your stitches 
The tail you leave or the length of the tail you leave will probably depend on what you plan on making. If it is something that needs to be cinched together or if it's something that needs to be sewn together, you will probably need to leave a little bit more of a tail but because this is just a demonstration today I'm just going to leave enough that allows me to go in and pick up all the stitches so the way that I usually measure is to just lay the yarn roughly across the width of my work and then that way I can figure out pretty much how much yarn I need to go in and pick up all the stitches so I'm just cutting my yarn now leaving a little tail and I'm going to take my yarn needle and I'm going to thread that through and what I'm going to do now is hold my yarn up like this so up towards you and just gently crank your machine this is going to kind of release your stitches I suppose so you can now go in and pick them up I'm just going to zoom in for you guys so you can see what I'm doing so now you are able to go in and pick up your stitches off of your machine obviously be really careful that you don't pull off any stitches that haven't yet been secured I do also go through this in my cast on cast off video so if you're not familiar with how to cast off you can go and check out that video on my channel and it will basically show you everything you need to know in regards to casting off but all I'm doing now is going in under every stitch and picking them up to secure them okay so I have gone in under every stitch and secured those now as you can see this tail here is caught in the end so I'm just going to crank my machine until that can be released not a big deal just pull it tight and that little tail there will disappear I'm just gonna get rid of my machine and I'll show you guys what the finished panel looks like. So this is what you should be left with guys. A little panel, obviously this is just for demonstration purposes so this is just a little swatch I suppose but obviously you would make this as big or as little as you need. Anyway guys, that is pretty much all there is to it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you did find it helpful. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to comment down below and I will do my very best to answer. Um, if it is something that is a little bit more complicated, I may even just make another video on it. So please do not hesitate to comment down below if you have any questions or if there's any other videos you would like to see. If you did enjoy this video, as always, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you will be notified of all my future videos. In the meantime, I will see you next time, guys. Stay safe and thanks again for watching. Bye!